Welcome to the instancing course. In this course, we'll teach you all about instancing and how to unlock the full power of wire. This course assumes that you have followed the basic wire course, which can be found on resolume.com slash training and on our YouTube channel. With that out of the way, let's get started. So what is an instance? An instance can be seen as multiple copies of a node within that node. When you need 50 circles, instead of making 50 circle nodes, you make a single circle node and set it to 50 instances. In this example, you can see that I've made five circle nodes. Each node goes into its own transform and shape render and requires a video mixer to combine them all. As you can imagine, this doesn't really scale when you need 50 of them. Scrolling down, I have recreated the same patch, but now with instances. That's a lot more compact and it scales better too. This node has five instances. This can be seen left of the main outlet. The number here indicates how many instances there are of this node. Also note that the cord coming from the circle node is dotted. A dotted cord indicates that the signal is instance. Hovering over an instance outlet, you can see its values. Now let's change the instance count. When you click on the node, you can change the instance count in the inspector. I'll set it to 15 circles. Nothing changes. Why is that? Because I'm using a linear node here to place the circles over the horizontal axis and the node is still set to five. When you send a signal with a lower instance count to a node with a higher instance count, wire automatically repeats it for you. Hovering over the translation inlet, we can see this happening. The result is that we have 15 circles but are placed on top of each other. Let's fix that by setting the linear node to 15 instances in the inspector. Nice, that works just fine. Our colors are repeating too, but this makes sense as the color node is set to five instances. Instead of a color, we see an M or a MULT. This stands for multiple, indicating there are multiple different values, in this case colors, inside of the node. Holding the control key down while clicking on the value box opens the multi-editor. We see five colors labeled from zero to four. I will repeat this many times over this course, but remember that when you deal with instances and instant counts, you always start counting from zero. Note that the multi-editor can also be accessed through the inspector. All right, grab a cup of coffee, time for some really theoretical stuff. Time to talk about terminology. An instance signal is called a collection. There are many nodes that deal with collections under the collections tab. We'll cover most of them during this course. Note that other tutorials and users on forums might refer to collections as arrays. A collection has a set amount of indices, running from zero to the instance count minus one. So a collection with five instances has indices running from zero to four, like we've seen in the color example. A single location in a collection is called an index. When I hover over this linear node, you could say that index two is equal to 0 0.22222. You could also say that indices zero to four hold values from 0 to 0 0.444. We'll dive deeper into indices when we get to the read and write tutorial, but for now, this should help you in understanding the terminology of the course. On to more fun stuff. All right, welcome to the first example patch, sort of patch along. Uh, we'll do this on each video. They are non-scripted and I just mess around with the concepts we just learned. Uh, first thing I want to show you is to move some shapes around using instancing. So we'll start with some circles. We want 10 of them and we want to move them around with the move node. I'm using move because it's uh, cheaper on the GPU to use move than a transform and I'm only going to um, move things around, not scale, so move is perfect. All right, then I want to have my linear node and I want to pack this because the translation wants a float to the linear produces a normal float collection. Uh, you can set it to float to right here, but for what I'm about to do, this is an easier way to do it. First, let's distribute everything among the X axis. So as you can see, uh, everything is pointing to the right now, so we will reduce this minus one, let's say minus 1.5, 1.5. 
Now we have our circles distributed over the x axis. And next step is I want to modulate the y position. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take a linear node again. Let's pop that in. And now everything is on a curve. And I want to sway this around. So what I'll do, is, as you can see, the, uh, the linear also has a min and a max, which can be modulated. So let's pick a sign and modulate the, the min. So now we already have movement from one, uh, one sign, not instance, to a linear modulating the min. Now I want to create the opposite. So I'll use a negate node, which basically makes any incoming positive value negative and any negative value incoming positive. And here I have my first little movement patch in wire using instancing. All right, in this second example, we'll do some um, offsetting of oscillators to create more interesting pattern, movement patterns than we did in the last example. So for this, I'll use a sine oscillator. Now, if I just pop this in straight away, we just get one circle, or every um, circle is moving at the same x and y coordinates. So we don't want that. We want to instance this. So we can set it to 10 here. And I'll offset the phase. What this means is that each oscillator, each instance, will move at a slightly different um, starting position. So as you can see, every value is now different. If I disconnect it, disconnect it every value is the same. So we'll offset it with a linear node, put it in, and we're already getting some interesting movement. Now let's do that. Uh, remove this and back it up here, and only on the X. So now we have our sign, needing tidying up the patch. Uh, we can copy this whole thing, just drag, Alt, Alt, drag for a copy. And here we have our uh, movement pattern. Now this is where you really get to play. You can modulate the or change the values on the linear. You quickly end up with some really nice patterns. I'm playing here with the amplitude, so that means that the oscillator will hit between uh, minus 0.5 and 0.5, uh, just making sure it's not running out of the screen. You get real, can get real creative with this. Uh, we could even say we want a secondary sign. We don't need to instance this to modulate this one, for example. Uh, let's put the amplitude at one. And we're already getting some really funky movement patterns with which you can play. All right, in this example, I want to demonstrate the gradient palette node. This is a node which is always instanced, and it basically creates a palette or a gradient of color values. Uh, you should know by now that uh, colors are float four values. So if I now create a shape render to render the shape, everything would be black or red or whatever, but if you want um, a color for each instance, the gradient palette is a great way to do this. So if we put in input this here, you can already see we have control over color. And we can get some more interesting patterns. As you remember, if you input something that has a lower instance count than the receiving end, uh, wire will copy it. So we can use this in our, uh, to our advantage with the gradient palette. Let's say we only want two colors. And now you can see these are the two colors that are being generated. And wire copies it for, to match the incoming 10 instances. 
Um, in future tutorials, we'll go into creating really complex palettes and go really all out with it. But for now, uh, this is the basics. One final trick that you can do with the gradient palette is create a texture out of it by using the texture node. This can sometimes be very useful. Let's put this to uh, 30. And let's set this to patch size to create gradients, just a gradient, uh, the size of your uh, patch. Uh, this will get more interesting as we get into manipulating the gradient palette to do a really weird stuff. Um, and you can use then the gradient palette for way more complex gradients uh, than you would have, of course, the gradient node, because this can do basically the same that we just created ourselves. But that is for the future. As with the previous course, I'll give you some homework to do after the end of each video. That should help you understand everything even better before moving on. As for this video, I want you to take a look at two examples that are built in wire. The order of oscillators example in the animation course and the node bodies example in the instancing course. Play around with them, make adjustments, experiment, break them and try to make something cool yourself. After you're done, you can move on to the next video where we'll discuss patterns.